This is Minnesota Home Talk on Score North. Here's your host, Jason Walgrave. Good morning, Twin Cities. This is Minnesota Home Talk here on 1500 Score North Radio. I'm your host this morning, Mike Overson with Leader One Financial. Jason Walgrave apparently thinks he can take a vacation, so he is not going to be with us this morning. He's going to be with us in spirit. Always is. But not physically here. He's yeah. he's taking social distancing to an extreme, basically, this morning. There's levels to this. Yeah. That's what I've learned in 2020. He's like, I'm going to play it safe this week for the radio show. I'm going to go to Florida, and then I can be properly socially distanced from the guys in the studio during yeah. the show. Nothing wrong with that. Some people's kids. But we're still here. Yeah. We're still here in the studio. We're here in, are we technically in St. Paul, Evan, right now? Yes. And we're about, what, 15 feet from Minneapolis? Uh, Probably more like 40. 40 feet from Minneapolis? Yeah. yeah. But we're right there, right on the line. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're basically in both places at once. It's like Houdini, but different. <laughs> I don't think that that's how Houdini worked, but, oh. you know. Well, that's how I think he worked. Misdirection? Yeah. Yeah. That's misdirection for I'm sure. I'm in St. Paul. No, I'm actually in Minneapolis. See? Yeah, but then you're not in both places at once. You're just claiming to be in one, and then you're actually in the other. Now it's getting, co- <laughs> now, it's illusion. Now it's getting complicated. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm shooting <laughs> down your joke. Uh, so we're here to the top of the hour. We're here till 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, we answer all your real estate and mortgage questions. We're going to talk about some current events in the real estate and mortgage market here. We're going to go through a list here, seven client behaviors emerging from COVID-19. So that'll be an interesting list here to go through, and we'll comment on that. We also have uh, seven ways uh, on how to buy in a tight market. And so if you are a buyer out there right now in the Twin Cities, uh, especially in the you know 450000 or less price range, you know that it's a tight market out there. It's very competitive on the buy side. So we'll talk about some of those uh, different ways that you can buy in a tight market. We also are going to be taking your questions this morning. So any questions dealing with mortgages, real estate, or credit repair, we will answer those questions live on air. And we have two pair of Saints tickets to give away. So two pair of St. Paul Saints tickets to give away for the two best questions of the morning. So again, you can either call us with your questions. That call in number is 651-646-8255. Or you can text your question to us as well. The text number is 612-202-8321. So again, the call-in number, 651-646-8255. And the text line is 612-202-8321. Both ways get you in the running for these St. Paul Saints tickets. And again, we have two pair to give away. We are also online. That is the easiest uh, way to get a hold of us throughout the week. Go to minnesotahometalk.com. And we have... Uh, a a ton of great information on our website. We have links to all of our preferred partners. So if you have any sort of need with your home or anything dealing with real estate, we have a guy for you. Um, We have uh, obviously Jason Walgrave with Remax. We have uh, Mike Overson with Leader One Financial for all your home financing needs. Pebble Creek Custom Homes. We have Bella Remodeling and Roofing. Uh, We have Last Switch here. We got Nepsis, which is a financial uh, planning firm. Uh, J- uh, Josh England, big biggie with Nepsis, great guy. Uh, he is uh, he is our partner here uh, on the financial uh, planning side of things. So we've got trademark title, we got Credit Life Credit Repair, we got home inspectors, we got uh, landscapers, we got home insurance, we got home warranties, we got a home appraiser, we have a staging group, Trend Home Staging. They're phenomenal at staging homes, and the list goes on and on and on. So you can check out all of our preferred partners there at minnesotahometalk.com. We also have a property search button. So if you are out there and you want to set up your own custom property search, uh, you can set that up right there at our website. Just click the property search button and it'll walk you right through it. We got a what's your home worth button. Uh, If you want to get a uh, market analysis done on your home by a live human to see what your value of your home is. So maybe you're looking at refinancing and your value of your home when it comes to refinancing that comes that's that's a part of it, right? That comes into play. Uh, maybe you're potentially looking at selling 
And maybe it's not selling now, but maybe it's selling next year. But you want to get your pulse on the market and you want to figure out what can you get for your house today. And if we do some projections, what do you think it would be a year from now? You can plug in with us. Uh, John Hageman, who's in studio with uh, me this morning, um, he would be more than happy to do a market analysis on your home. So click the What's Your Home Worth button if you want to get more information on that. We got a button that says, Is Refinancing Right for Me? Which we're just going to rename it as the Yes button because that question has been yes for pretty much everyone lately. So we have the yes button, also known as refinancing right for me. You can click that, plug in some very basic information. I can let you know if refinancing is going to make sense for you or not. And then we also have just a general ask a question button. So you got a question for myself. You got a question for John. You got a question for any of our preferred partners on there. Literally just click the ask a question button, type it in there, um, and we will route that question to the correct partner that can answer that for you. So again, phone lines are open, 651-646-8255 is the call-in number. The text number is 612-202-8321. Call us or text us with your questions this morning. We'll answer them live on air. And then any questions that uh, come in, either on the phone line or the text line, uh, will get entered into the uh, contest here to win uh, a pair of St. Paul Saints tickets. Again, phone number 651-646-8255, and the text number is 612-202-8321. Evan, you got some yeah. sweet music teed up for Hot Deals? There it is. There it is. Let's do them, Hot cue? Deals. That's it. That's my cue. Good morning, everybody. So let's start out in lovely corner of the woods, Savage, Minnesota at 6625 132nd Lane. We've got, let's see, a a side-by-side townhouse with uh, 1,500 square feet, a two-bed, two-bath, two-car garage just built last year, and that's going to be $364,000. Headed over to West St. Paul in Minnesota. Uh, 932 Dodd Road. We got a three bed, three bath, cute little house uh, on one and a half uh, stories. It's 1,100 square feet altogether, and that's right at a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, coming over into Maplewood, 1239 Dorland Road S, South S. Uh, four bed, two bath, uh, two car garage built in 1951. Uh, we've got 1,300 finished square feet and your standard city lot for $300,000. Next one, the Wilds over in Pri- Prior Lake. This is a beautiful home built in 2007. Um, five bed, five bath, four car garage, 3,800 square feet altogether. Total finished is, I'm sorry, 6,400 square feet. This place is a monster. And it's $969,000 on the dot. Mike and I were just saying, why isn't this sold yet? I love that it's house. It's gorgeous. That it's, house is... It's a knockout. That one, that one for a 2007 built, it mm-hmm. looks like it was built in 2017. Like, yeah. it was so far ahead of its time. It looks like new construction that would be built today. It's an amazing house. It's a great house. That's value. And sticking in Prior Lake, we got 14709 Wilds View Northwest. And we've got four bed, three car, I'm sorry, four bed, three bath, three car garage built in 2005, 4,500 square feet. And it's single family coming in at $698,000. And let's see, how many more do we want to do? Yeah, a couple more. A couple more? Yeah, All right. absolutely. These are hot deals. Hot deals. Savage, Minnesota, headed back there over on Quebec Place. This is a gorgeous custom home, five bed, five bath, three car garage, built this year, 4,500 square feet, and it's going to be $1,500,000. i am sorry, $1,050,000. This is a custom home, too. Yeah. Yet to be built. I, I, I believe it's a Pebble Creek custom home. It is. Very, very nice. Uh, very familiar with the homes that they build. Um, they have a model that just sold in Prior Lake um, about a month ago that was a Reggie Award winning home. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with the Reggie, Reggie I'm Award? Fr- uh, familiar with the Reggie Award. And yeah. you know what threw me off? The picture on here. Right. That's the house. Right. So I thought, hey, I've been there. <laughs> Haven't been to this one. This one's still under construction. So. It, it, if you want to get into a brand new build and go through that process, Pebble Creek also has a custom home class and workshop that they'll bring you through, let you know exactly how that process works from soup to nuts. Yeah, it's Good nice. Yeah. Um, if you are um, if you are unfamiliar with the Reggie Award, this is just a side note, it's kind of like the Heisman for college football, right? Mm-hmm. 
it's kind of like the MVP for the NFL, you know, yeah. that whole bit. So it's it's a very prestigious award. Uh, and I know that model that they had over there in Prior Lake that won the Reggie Award, I believe, last year. So it's pretty impressive. They do a lot of nice stuff. They do. All right. Uh, I'm sticking over in Savage, 14667 Sumter Avenue. Uh, we've got one built last year. Four, uh, four bed, three bath, three car garage. 2700 square feet and the going price on that is going to be six hundred ninety nine thousand dollars even also another Pe pebble creek custom home another pebble creek custom home also in savage they've got a lot of options in savage yes they do pebble creek and they i'll tell you if you walk through one of their places you're going to be just instant you'll instantly notice a difference between them and some of the other mass builders it's it's day and night compared to them. Yes. So I agree. We can keep going in Savage. More Savage. It's a little bit of a Pebble Creek has some options. I think that I think we're gonna leave it at that. Okay, perfect. Does that sound fair? That sounds fair to me. Hot so deals. If you Pebble have, Creek. If you have any questions on these hot deals or if you want to get any more information on them, you can certainly visit us online at Minnesotahometalk.com or you can just reach out to us directly. Uh, we can make sure we get that information to you. We'll plug you in directly with John uh, from the Walgreen Real Estate Team or with Jason and get you that info. Phone lines are open, 651-646-8255. Any real estate or mortgage questions this morning, you can either call in or text in with those questions, and we'll answer them live on air. And that gets you in the running for uh, a pair, couple pair of St. Paul Saints tickets that we're giving away this morning. So, again, the phone line is 651 646 8255 and the text line is 612-202-8321. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we're going to talk about seven client behaviors that has emerged from COVID-19. So we'll get into that a little bit deeper. But before we hit that, um, I want to get uh, John Hegman's uh, view on a couple things out here. Yeah. Um, so John, you're on the Walgrave Real Estate team. Yes, sir. Um, you know, the team, uh, the home base for the team is in Savage there, but you live... In Minneapolis. I do. I live right just outside of there. Uh, St. Anthony Village. But before then, we lived in northeast Minneapolis, and we lived also in Whittier. So think of uptown. Okay. Um, so we spent the past, I'd say, five, six years living living in there. And what we did, my wife and I, um, we owner-occupied duplexes. We would take advantage of owner-occupancy financing, get into a duplex with 3%, 5% down, and not only have a home, but we've also got some nice neighbors that are paying for not all of it. And it was never a even split, but they were paying, let's say, you know, 90, 80% of that mortgage. And then when we moved out, then we got another tenant in there. We started cash flowing immediately from there. Lather, rinse, repeat. We did it twice. Should have done it more, but you know what? I, I can declare victory having two duplexes right now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it's nice to have you because you're, you know, you live, you live in, in the St. Anthony Village, Minneapolis uh, market that we're in. You know, and each market is different. You know, a Lakeville is going to be different from Maple Grove, which is going to be different mm -hmm. from Minneapolis, which is going to be different from, right, Vadness Heights. So um, just the general pulse of the market where you're at, um, what's the what's the feel you get up there? Very busy like the rest of the Twin Cities or? It is. Yeah, it's incredibly busy. And, you know, I, I think a lot of times we will say, you know, anything under $450,000 is that entry level of price point. Um, I think in Minneapolis, that can even go up a little bit higher uh, just because of the demand. Um, obviously, 2020 COVID, everything that's come into play has really changed things for a lot of people. But um, let's see, my I had some great clients that we ended up buying a house with them uh, in South Minneapolis at just at that $550,000 price point, we had to get in that first day. Uh, we knew we were going into multiple offers. We went in with a really strong offer. And not only that, but how we positioned the deal really helped us get that deal. Um, but, yeah, things are flying off the shelf regardless. There's just so much demand uh, for Minneapolis. And, you know, again, anything anything under half a million dollars. So that $550,000 buyer you're working with went to multiple offers. Do you know roughly how many offers? Came in total um, on that one. I want to say there was probably seven or so. So seven, yeah, seven offers ish on a five hundred fifty thousand dollars house in South Minneapolis. Correct. So, you know, and that's that's entering that price point where there's less buyers that can afford mm -hmm. that price range, but you can still see. I mean, seven offers is quite a few offers on a listing. Absolutely, and I think, you know, initially when COVID hit, there was a lot of, um, you know, just intrepidation with the market. You know, 
when the stock market really took a hit earlier this year, we saw a lot of people at those higher price points kind of pull back because if you're going to buy a bigger home, chances are you needed to liquidate some assets. Since we've seen a recovery in the stock market kind of at a breakneck speed, that end of the market we've seen kind of open up a lot more and they're more willing to liquidate the assets. Maybe it's do it while you can, but at least, you know, they can, um, you know, sell some stocks some bonds, whatever assets they have to help finance that down payment and get into, you know, a pretty big move up home. So on that point, I had a buyer uh, two weeks ago that was um, making an offer on a $1.2 million house in Prior Lake uh, on the lake. And they got into multiple offers on a $1.2 million house where there was three other, there was four total offers that came in within two days, the first yeah. two days of the listing, which seems crazy to me. So you got mm -hmm. a $1.2 million house in the market for two days and you got four offers that came in. Um, and it just kind of shows, you know, the pent up demand that's there out is. there. Yeah. Um, there's very few listings out there. Um, and I think we'll have to try to locate the stats for this week so we can go through the listings mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. But kind of just shows you know, the status of the market and how competitive it is out there. It is. The best way, you know, to, that I try to make it understandable for a lot of people is let's say that there's two homes out there for every buyer. If we look at it that way, what does that really mean? It's kind of like going toilet paper shopping back in March. Right. If you see it, you got to get it. That's pretty much your best option. It's <laughs> a great analogy right there. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's just low supply. That is. You know, and I think it's even... I deal with a lot of first-time home buyers, a lot of people that were renters and that are trying to get into their first home. The biggest problem, especially when you get into the the really entry-level price points, what we used to traditionally think, let's say 250, 350 even, you've got so much demand at that price at that that price point because you've got the first-time home buyers, which you know they're just trying to get a start. You've got also um, people that are looking to downsize their home and get into something a little bit more manageable. They don't need the 3,400 square feet anymore. Um, so you've got baby boomers that are looking to get into that price point as well. And then uh, on top of that, you've also got investors, investors that have had properties, you know, pull in, in a lot of equity, they can refinance those and come in with a cash deal as well. So it's making a tight market, even more hyper competitive, which is really, really tough for a lot of these first time home buyers. Yeah. We're going to dive into that a little bit more too, on mm -hmm. the investment side of things, because I know there's some changes with the COVID, um, yeah. that have come up from that. Um, I know a lot of changes on the city level, Minneapolis, having some different regulations that went into play, St. Paul. Um, so we're going to talk about that in a little bit mm -hmm. when we come back from the break. But the phone lines are open, 651-646-8255, answering any mortgage or real estate question this morning, live on air for you. Uh, any question uh, that comes in this morning is going to get a chance to win those St. Paul Saints tickets that we are giving away. We have two pair of St. Paul Saints tickets to give away to the do two best questions of the morning. So again, the call-in number is 651-646-8255. And the text number is 612-202-8321. Have you checked out minnesotahometalk.com? It has one of the best online home search tools in the state. We have map search tools, and you can create your own custom home search. It is updated from the MLS every single day. We also offer free market analysis on your home or investment property and tons of free reports on real estate. Check us out online at minnesotahometalk.com. That's minnesotahometalk.com. Josh England at Nepsis Capital Management is a financial advisor, advocate, and guide for life. Passionate about helping people understand how investing and planning are crucial to being successful, he's the financial advisor you didn't know you needed. Call 952-746-2003. Are you on track to have the kind of future you've always wanted? Call Josh England today at 952-746-2003 to take the free Nepsis Investment Stress Test to determine if your investments are the best they can be. 952-746-2003. Looking to build your new home? Look to Pebble Creek Custom Homes. The founders of Pebble Creek Custom Homes have over 40 years combined experience and understand that your new home will be the backdrop for a lifetime of memories. Pebble Creek Custom Homes will work with you, your budget, and your needs to create the perfect home for you and your family. Pebble Creek Custom Homes comes with warranties and craftsmanship, mechanical, and structural components. For more information, call 612-405-4060 or go to minnesotahometalk.com. 
Com. Hello, I'd like to talk with you about financial coaching. Traditional financial planners help you make decisions about stocks, bonds, and mutual funds with money you already have. That's great, but who helps you accumulate more money in the first place? Who helps you make day-by-day -day life decisions? Who isn't trying to sell you something? Like, should I go back to school? Am I wasting money on insurance? How to purchase and finance a car, boat, home, lake cabin, or investment property? How to start, manage, and sell a business? It's about making minor errors that become colossal mistakes and cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime. The problem is that you're so busy pursuing your career that you're forced to make critical financial decisions that have a dramatic long-term effect on your finances without adequate research or information. Rooker Financial Coaching is like having a personal CFO for every decision. Don't waste time lamenting the bad decisions of the past or money that's run through your fingertips. Stop procrastinating. Call Rooker Financial Coaching, 763-559-3800. That's 763-559-3800. Call me today, Todd Rooker, 763-559-3800. That's 763-559-3800. 3800. Looking to make your current home into a dream home? Call Bella Remodeling and Roofing, the preferred remodeler of Minnesota Home Talk. Bella Remodeling and Roofing is also the Twin Cities' leading storm damage expert and can take care of your insurance restoration. Bella Remodeling does it all. The next time a storm hits your home, a pipe bursts in the basement, or you've just decided it's time to remodel your kitchen or bathroom, call Bella Remodeling and Roofing. Bella offers a free consultation, excellent customer service, and superior workmanship. Call 612 760 09 or go to minnesotahometalk.com. TPM Flooring is a family-owned, trusted name in the flooring business. Committed to friendly customer service, competitive pricing, and attention to detail. TPM Flooring's private showroom offers a diverse selection of quality flooring products. They also supply and install solid wood, engineered wood, laminate, luxury vinyl sheet ceramic, and porcelain tile, and all types of carpet. Transforming your floors one room at a time. TPM Flooring. Call 952-746-5157 or tpmflooring.com. Riverland Bank is proud to serve as the official commercial lender of Minnesota Home Talk. Riverland Bank is locally owned and operated, so all decisions are made right here in the Twin Cities. That means faster response times and more flexibility for you. Riverland Bank offers a full range of commercial services, including commercial real estate, letters of credit, operating lines of credit, equipment financing, and SBA loan programs. Call 952-492-2750 or go to minnesotahometalk.com. Riverland Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. The hosts of Minnesota Home Talk are taking your calls live right now. Call in 651-646-8255. That's 651-646-8255. If you're looking for a great real estate opportunity in Sioux Falls, look to Marcus Walgrave and Haig Realtors. Sioux Falls has become one of the nation's fastest growing cities and has boasted a steady economy during one of the toughest recessions in U.S. history. The national economy is on the rebound and Sioux Falls is ahead of the curve. Over the next 20 years, Sioux Falls is expected to grow to over a quarter million people. Haig Realtors was South Dakota's number one real estate firm in 2016 and Marcus Walgrave can help you in this hot market. It's better in Sioux Falls and Marcus Walgrave can help you get there. Call 605-496-9872 or go to minnesotahometalk.com and welcome back to minnesotahometalk.com answering your mortgage and real estate questions this morning you can also uh see us on facebook live if you go to jason walgrave's facebook page yes i have his logins Evan wishes he had his logins. Evan loves you, Facebook, you by the way, John. Look at, look at. Yeah. He, he, you, do you? You might. You can post some good Evan, memes. I think Evan loves Facebook, though, if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> <laughs> loves it. But we are live on Jason Walgrave's Facebook page, so go to Jason Walgrave on Facebook, and you can watch uh, us live here. Me, uh, which is Mike Overson from Leader One Financial, and John Hageman from the Walgrave Real Estate Group. Yeah, boy. Uh, or you can call us with your questions this morning. Again, that number is 651-646-8255. You can text us, 612-202-8321. Anything dealing with mortgages, real estate, uh, even credit repair, I'm very handy with that. All those questions are welcome. The top two questions of the morning uh, are going to win a pair of St. Paul Saints tickets. So, again, call in number 651 646 8255 and the text number is 612-202-8321. We were talking about um, kind of just the Minneapolis market here and talking about 
um, how competitive it is out there. Um, we're going to shift gears just a little bit here, but talk about um, investors and rental properties and some of the uh, things that have come up with the COVID uh, uh, and the rules of around evictions for tenants and things like that. I know there was a bunch of rules uh, and protection stuff put in place, and there's been kind of some mixed feelings on there, I know, mm -hmm. in the general world out there um, on are you – are you helping the situation or are you hurting with these rules? Obviously, the intentions are good, right? Any Absolutely. sort of regulations that go into place, the intention there is good, but it's kind of the unintended consequences that kind of come along with it. Absolutely. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. John, what would you pull up there on the um, on the eviction moratorium? Well, what we were looking is, you know, if, if you're not familiar with it, since COVID happened, uh, Governor Waltz put into place an executive order which banned evictions. Um, you know, the concern is that we've got, I don't know about in the state, but, you know, we've got 30 million, 30 million people in the U.S. that are unemployed right now. Uh, this this was actually, there was a federal eviction moratorium and foreclosure moratorium, correct? Yep. Yep. So I believe that lapsed, um, but Minnesota still has its own eviction ban in place. That was recently updated and went back into effect actually this Monday on the 4th. Uh, now, that still has the eviction in, uh, moratorium in place, but it allows landlords, I'm reading this uh, from the Min, Min Post, um, landlords can evict uh, tenants who have significantly damaged the property or if the property manager um, or their family needs to move in. So if you are not, if you're just behind on payments, you're, um, the landlord's hands are tied. There's nothing that they can do. In addition to that, even if you're at the end of your lease with your tenant or vice versa, roles reversed, um, you don't necessarily have to move out. Um, the landlord can't ask you to move out at the end of your lease because it's the end of the lease. Um, you're, it's it's basically it's it's up to the tenant if they want to move out. They absolutely have the ability and freedom to do whatever they please. But as a as a landlord, you right now cannot ask a tenant to vacate the property because it's the end of the lease right now so and i think the prior rule that was into place and now you got to remember there was uh there was a federal moratorium that's put into place and then Correct. the state but then the cities also have their own rules around that too so minneapolis has their own rules st paul has their own rules and so on and so i know for a while there at least over in st paul um you know the the concern was well okay so if a landlord can't uh, evict a tenant for uh, any sort of reason out there. Well, what happens if you have an unruly tenant that's mm -hmm. affecting the livability of the other tenants? For example, you got a tenant that has a dog um, in in the property and the thing's roaming the hallways, mm -hmm. right? And then that affects... Just the chihuahua? It's just, yeah, ferocious chihuahua, right? Yeah. Um, the but, ankle uh, biters, though. Yeah, right? You know? You know, but it might... So then other tenants were saying, well, yeah, like they're scared of this dog. It's a bigger, larger dog, right. whatever. So they're scared of this dog um, and so now that's affecting the livability then of those other tenants. Mm -hmm. So are you by the having this rule in place for that particular situation, you know, are you, are you helping out the majority or are you mm -hmm. not helping out the majority in that particular situation? Yeah. I will right? point out that, that there is an exemption for safety as well. You can evict people for conducting criminal, uh, Actions Accident. on your premises and stuff like that. Mm, yep. And I think that that falls into endangering the safety of others. So, so yeah. So it, it right. was, it was those types of examples and stuff that came up that were just a lot of people were talking about and stuff. So mm. uh, it's just interesting. You yeah. know what I mean? Just know that it's out there. Um, I know that some investors, you know, um, those small time investors that buy single families, buy duplexes, rent sure. them out to families and stuff. I know that some of them are pulling out of Minneapolis and St. Paul or maybe just not mm -hmm. looking at there to buy investment properties because of some of these rules that are in place. But, um, well, I think COVID aside, there's been a, um, a big push from city council and other, um, outreach groups to get, I don't want to say tighter, but actually to make it, make the background process, uh, not as stringent. I think that's the best way I can say it. Um, you know, whereas before when I used to work in property management, I have five years of experience doing this. I placed literally hundreds of people, uh, hundreds of tenants in Minneapolis specifically. 
we would run a background check. You know, that means credit. We, we would look at their criminal history. We would look at their rental history. Um, there's so much that's changed over just the past couple of years. And, and truth be told, I'm not completely up to date because I'm not in that industry as much anymore. I just focus on my little corner of the universe in, with my rentals. But I know it's, you know, the let, let's just go with the, the criminal background. There's... They introduced an element of recidivism, which is, you know, what's the likelihood that if somebody had something on their background, is that going to is that person going to be a repeat offender? And based on what that crime was, as a landlord, you should be turning your uh, turning away from um, from using that that criminal background in your decision making process. The same can be said for credit scores and. Think, and I'm almost certain um, evictions now, depending on how far, how long ago they were, um, you know, as bef whereas before you could just say, well, hey, you had an eviction, you know, two, three years ago. I'm sorry. You know, I without a really good case outside of that, I'm not comfortable moving forward with you now so much. You know, it's there's a lot of things that you were able to put into your decision making tree. And now now you can't even really acknowledge those. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's definitely a different game. There's been a lot of kind of side again. So it's it's all the regulations that have been put in place are based on good intentions, right? They yeah. want to try to help um, help the situation uh, and try to get us through, you know, all the craziness, all the changes, all this weird stuff that's happening with the COVID stuff going on. Um, but then you have all those unintended con consequences, yeah. like I was speaking about on the loan side of things. You know, I I'm in mortgage business, so I mean I can speak more intelligently on on that stuff. You know, so when we go back to when TRID got put into place back in, what was that, 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. somewhere back there, um, again, the intentions were good, right? More re regulations for lenders out there, more guidelines that had to be met, more than this, more that. Mike, could um, you, sorry, could you tell people what TRID was? Oh, TRID? Yeah. So tri TRID was uh, TRID was the basically the set of laws in the mortgage industry that um, put all these timelines into place, right? So you have certain waiting periods you have to do. You have certain disclosures that have to be signed and and within a certain amount of time after triggering an application, mm -hmm. all these different regulations, basically that a lender um, has to meet mm -hmm. in order to be able to fund a home loan now. So it's that set of set of regulations here that the lenders had to change. So it's like, hey, when you get an application in, you got to mm -hmm. send initial disclosures within three days. You have to do this by this time. and You got to do that by that time. You got to collect these certain income docs from borrowers. It's just this whole set of regulations and, and guidelines that lenders have to follow now. So... When you put that into place, it's protecting the consumer because you have a specific set of guidelines that every lender has to fall through. And then you can now, you know, you can kind of police that more. Mm -hmm. Right. So then it's like, OK, well, here's the rules and boom, boom, boom. It's step by step. Lender, did you do that in these particular files? So if, a, you know, if a, if a, a complaint arises or something like that, well, now a regulator or someone can go in and they can be looking. They can be like, OK, this document was set on this date and it was signed on this date. It was sent out this date, signed that date and just see the timeline. Um, but when you put when you put extra regulations in a place like that, what happens? Drives costs up because right. not, lenders have to hire more staff. They got to hire compliance departments. They got to do this. They got to do that to help make sure that they meet all these requirements. And so, you know, the intention was to protect consumers to make it more clear so that they understand, you know, the loan process better and they understand the numbers and all that stuff. On the back end, it made more mortgages more expensive because mm -hmm. now lenders have to staff up. And they have, uh, you know, other costs outside of that. They have compliance that they have to reach out. They have audits, extra audits that they got to do. And so that was the unintended consequence was, you know, the cost to get a mortgage then went up. So right. if you look at it, any sort of stat from, you know, 2012 ish, 2013 on what it, the actual or the average closing cost was on a loan versus today, um, you're going to see, you know, a pretty big difference, a pretty big jump. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the regulations there. Yeah. Um, phone lines are open, 651-646-8255. Taking your mortgage and real estate questions this morning. We'll answer them live on air. We also have a text-in number. That text number is 612-202-8321. The top two questions of the morning are going to uh, win those St. Paul Saints tickets that we have to give away. Again, phone line 651-646-8255. And the text line is 612-202-8321. Do you have a house that needs a lot of work? Are you ready to sell but think no one will buy because of the condition? Would you like to sell and close in as little as seven days? Give us a call. We have clients that are buying properties that need all levels of renovation and rehab. They are cash buyers looking to purchase right now. 
Give us a call or check us out online at minnesotahometalk.com. That's you know, Minnesota I like the scheme. I like uh, I like the continuity that we have offensively with the with the uh, coaches, and I feel like um, you know if we add a couple more pieces and and uh, continue to work on the execution of staying with the same play calls, the same system, the same uh, motions and formations and things like that, it will it will definitely help the offensive uh, players. And that was. Mike Zimmer talking about the Minnesota Vikings this year. <laughs> I was that, that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Zeta is a really, really great program, and I'm really happy about it. Yeah, I see that, Evan. That was funny. <laughs> speaking of that, by the way. Live air. Speaking of that, what's the what's the NFL season going to look like this year? Weird. In a nutshell. Right? Yeah. Any, any fans? Are there going to be any fans there, or, you think? I don't I, I, I haven't heard There's anything. too much money. I mean, there is. There is. You know, but there's... Someone's going to get, like, the section. You think that's what it's going to be? Probably. Because, you know, the that's St. Paul Saints, do. so we're giving tickets yeah. away to the Saints, right? So mm-hmm. they, they do have COVID-friendly guidelines in place. I know that they have, you know, a family can sit next to each other, but then, you know, they're spacing out the next hmm. group type of deal. And so I imagine their capacity is probably 50% maybe in their stadium that they have wow. over there based on those um, based on those guidelines and stuff. But I was just curious... You know, we start seeing, um, like, uh, uh, who was it? UConn. UConn canceled yeah, their football out. season, right? First, first uh, college team to just basically say there's going to be no football season this year. We've already seen the Marlins and what happened with them, right? Um, you know, what happens with the Big Ten? I know the yeah. Big Ten said no non-conference games. That's for sure mm-hmm. a deal. But are they going to have conference games now? I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll be real interesting yeah. to see. All right, so. Um, we are going to go to uh, a text question that came in, actually. Uh, the text line, again, is 612-202-8321. And the question is here, buyers pay cash to win in multiple offers, will then refi after closing in order to take advantage of today's low rates. Is there a downfall to this? Uh, I.e., is it more stringent to refi than to purchase a home? Is it more to refinance than to purchase? Is there a waiting period? That's a great question. So if yeah. you go in and buy a house um, with cash and then turn around and put financing on that house, what does it look like? Um, it does It does turn into a cash out refinance at that point. Um, refinance rates are different than purchase rates. So is there a difference? Absolutely. There's going to be a difference in the interest rate that you can get um, if you basically buy that house with cash and then turn around and pull the cash out um, or get financing on the house. Um, There's also a restriction on how much you can borrow. So, uh, again, if you go buy a house with cash and then you want to go put a loan on it and get some of that cash back, the max financing you can get is 80%. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do a purchase, um, purchase loan and and do that, you can do potentially as little as 3% down. Otherwise, if you don't meet the qualifications for 3% down, which is you're a first-time home buyer or you're underneath a certain income cap, then the minimum down is 5%. So doing the purchase loan is going to get you in with uh, a slightly lower interest rate and lesser down payment. Um, and if you're going to buy the house with cash and then put financing in the house, you're going to have, you know, you're going to leave 20% equity mm-hmm. into the house at that point, and you might have slightly higher interest rate. But you've got the asset, and you're able to pull out that some of that cash then. Right. So, so, so it, it, it depends, you know, so if you were, a, a if you were, a buy, if you were a buyer and yeah. you were going to put 20% down anyway, mm-hmm. not a bad way to go. No. So I was, you know what, I was going to put 20% down anyway, but now because it's so competitive, I'm going to go buy this thing with cash and then I'll just basically pull 80% back out once I get into it. Then not much of a change for you at all. It's right. the buyers that weren't planning on having 20% or more down from the get go that that situation wouldn't be you know, the best for them because yeah. it's, you're leaving a lot more money at the table than you were expecting. Right. What are rates are uh, now for cash out refis? Um, you know, depending upon credit score. So if we're talking yeah. top tier credit score, mm-hmm. if you're talking 75% loan of value or less, mm-hmm. um, you'd be looking at probably two nine nine. Really? Yeah. Wow. On a cash out. Okay. 30 year fixed cash out. If you're talking about no cash out, mm-hmm. you'd be looking at 2.75 Get out. on a 30 year fixed conventional. Yeah. Um, Obviously, top to your credit, you know, that whole sure. the bit that comes along with it. But those are the types of rates that are out there now. Um, I remember back in March, you and I were talking about some of those duplexes that we have and refinancing those. Mm-hmm. And 
again, because we bought them with owner occupancy financing, even if it was, you know, three, four years ago, we still had really good rates in like the mid threes. And when we were looking at doing some refinancing on those, because it was March and there was so much demand, that that's right when things really started to get pretty gnarly for you, wasn't it? It got crazy. Yeah. Interest and rates, rates were, they kind of went Tommy boy. They just went all over the place. All over. And uh, I remember we were looking at probably around five, five and a half percent. Does that sound about right? Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Because there was so much demand for refinancing that um, lenders were actually putting the, a prep, um, you know, they were giving not preferential treatment, but they were wanting to make sure that, you know, actual owner occupants were getting taken care of. And those were the people that were put as a priority. Me with the duplex that hasn't lived there in three years, well, you're on the back burner, it, kind which of. is fair, you yeah. know, I get it. Yeah. So it, it, the whole capacity issue, yeah. you know, that came up with like the, the stat I heard the other day was that there's 10, there's $10 trillion worth of loans. Mm-hmm in the US that have the demand to be refinanced right now, the industry is staffed for four trillion. So loan officers, appraisers, processors, underwriters, you know, everyone from start to finish on the loan side of things in the entire country, there's enough staff to do four trillion in a year. So there's a six trillion with a T shortfall. Right. Right. So you yeah. have ten trillion that wants to get into the game. Yeah. And there's only four trillion that can actually be done on a yearly basis. So you take that and spread it out. How many years do we have of Mm-hmm. this right and i think rates are going to stay down for a while too yeah, i'm with to, you to be honest with you so it might be a two-year or three-year yeah. run where we have really low interest rates like this where it's really busy um which is crazy yeah. i guess we'll see what happens but we do have some calls coming in so we're going to go to the phone lines here we're going to go first to adam who's on the line good morning adam morning morning thanks for calling in how can we help you I got a question. I live in a uh, neighborhood with extremely high demand. Anything that comes on the market is gone like within a day. So there's not really any options to move there. And we're considering an addition on our home. But, you know, building costs are going up extensively, the materials. And it seems like the banks are pulling back on the amount of uh, equity and things like that, the percentages. The last time I talked to somebody, they said 70% was the max they were lending. And I was considering wondering what other kind of options are there for something like that. So you're looking to to refinance, pull cash out to build an addition on the house. Yes, is that right? Let's finance it somehow. What's the what's the you know kind of looking for what options we have out there? Yep. So so your best option is probably going to be a construction loan. Construction loan you can get ninety percent financing on. So what you would do is this. So we would get an appraisal done on your house based on the future value. So after this addition is put on, what will your house appraise for? That's the type of appraisal we would get. You can borrow up to 90% of what that number is going to be. So plugging in with someone like John um, on this scenario would be good up front because, you know, John would be able to do a market analysis on your house to say, okay, how much of an addition are you going to put on? Now, then what's your total square footage going to be after that done? What's it going to look like? Run comps. Um, based on neighborhood uh, up there to say, okay, realistically, your appraisal value or market value would be X after that addition is on. Mm-hmm. Take that number times 90%, and that's the type of financing you can get. What's the, um, I mean, I, I've, I've heard about construction loans a little bit, but is, is that a, what's the market, is it higher cost? Is that something you refinance it after you, you know, a couple years down the road after you do a construction loan? How does that work? Yep. So, yep. So it's, it is a two time close. So the construction loan would pay off your existing financing that you have on the house. And then anything left over would be able to use to build the addition on there. Once the construction is done, you would refinance that construction loan onto a permanent, you know, 30 year fixed or something like that. Um, there are, there are a couple of banks out there. I know that do what are called future value seconds. So they will give you a second mortgage on your house up to 90% of the value again, based on the future value. So again, they'll get an appraisal done as if the addition was already put on, take 90% of that and then minus out your existing financing. And that's what you can get on a second mortgage. Now, because it is a second mortgage, interest rates are going to be higher and you're not going to get a 30 year fixed or anything like that. So if there's kind of a give and a take, if this is going to be a long-term play, I think the construction loan and then refinancing onto a 30-year fixed or 20-year fixed, whatever you want at the end, is the way to go. Um, if it's a shorter-term play, well, then maybe paying the higher interest on that second mortgage for a couple of years isn't the worst thing. Um, and then you could save yourself some closing costs by going that route. Okay. 
All right. But those Sounds are great. Really appreciate it. Yeah, those are good mm-hmm. questions, Adam. Um, we got your we got your uh, leave your contact information with Evan here, and we can uh, get in touch mm-hmm. with you on Monday and talk a little bit more about it. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. Phone lines are open, 651-646-8255. The text line is also open for your questions. That text number is 612-202-8321. We're going to go back to the phone lines, and we have David Meyer on the phone. Good morning, David. Morning, gentlemen. How are you today? Very, Very good, good sir. How are you doing? I'm bike ride out in the Lake Elmo Park Reserve. Nice. I'm a little winded. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Getting your cardio for a ride. Well, and the other reason I called is I want to talk to the best musky slayer in the country. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You got He's him. Not on, talking about me. You got him on the line. Don't ask what lake I fish at because I'm not going to give I'm up not. that info. <laughs> I'm not. But holy crap, have you hauled some lunkers in this year? Yeah, it's been a good year. I Man. mean, with the COVID, go, I've never fished more, you know, in my life than right. now because there's nothing else to do, and so we've used our pontoon and gone out there and fished way more this year than any other year. So that's part of it, right. you know, just putting the time in, you know increases your chances getting the reps in yep yep hey so let me ask you this related to this whole eviction thing yeah sure did they do anything with car loans because i like it to a car loan so yeah. you, you tell you know put it this way you got a car loan you're not paying on can the bank still come and take it away i you know and how is how is it any different for housing i know i know people need a place to live and everything but as a as an investor myself you know, we're, we're doing everything, my partners and I, we're doing everything we can to help the people that rent from us. Right. But, it, but at some point, you're not paying, you're not paying. Oh, absolutely. It's very true. Yeah. You know, I, I, John and I were talking before the show a little bit about that. And the analogy I had was, you know, you could go into Best Buy and buy a computer, you know, mm-hmm. and they can ask you to pay for it. But, you know, if you decided to walk out of there and not pay for it, they couldn't make you pay for it type of deal. Yeah. You know, obviously... Yeah. A, a good, you know, a consumer good like that is way different from housing. But, you know, it's just kind of gives you an example of or analogy of, of kind of what it's like on the landlord side of things. It's like, hey, I, you know, I'm, I am providing a service. I am providing this to the tenant um, and there, I can't collect right now, you know. So. Right. And we've been we've been very blessed with our properties that we haven't had a problem with, with folks yet, you know. But I feel for some of those people that have. Because you oh, know, yeah. all of a sudden the landlord gets in trouble. Now he can't afford to pay his mortgages. And, and now all of a sudden the property becomes in dis- disrepair and, you know, the sink breaks and, and they're not going over to fix it because the tenant's not paying the rent. And they don't have any money to spend to fix it. Right. You know, I'm, th- I'm thinking of the, you know, the majority of rental landlords are small time, single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex people. It's not the Absolutely. 60 unit apartment building. I think that there's another piece of this, too, where you can get into something that's kind of penny-wise, pound-foolish. It's easy to say, well, they're not paying, so we should kick them out. But the question is, are there people out there, lots and lots of people out there that are easily going to be able to pay? And right now, that gets to be a pretty big question mark. That's the thing. Then it's it's, what's the alternative? You know, Mm -hmm. are you going to be able to, is it going to be sitting vacant anyway? You know, if if they're not there to work with them? I mean, it's, it's, no one has the right answer is, is, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's again, regulations that are put in place are, you know, the intentions are good. Um, they're all based on good intentions. It's just a matter of, you know, the unintended consequences that come along with it. Well, I think ultimately yeah, we have, um, you know, whether it's COVID or a lot of the uh, restrictions that were put in place prior to this uh, in St. Paul, Minneapolis and, and in other states or I'm sorry, other cities. Ultimately, there is a housing crisis, and that's why we're seeing, you know, in Minneapolis, the big issue that a lot of parks are running into is there's now um, camp intentments everywhere. Um, there's just so many people that need to f- have housing, and, you know, th- I think really the onus is going to be on, you know, I'll try not to get too political, but I think it really needs to get onto the city council, and we need to figure out a way how we can actually get some market rate, you know, affordable housing in throughout the cities, you know, and stop looking at, you know, a plus $2,000 a month, you know, two bedrooms that are getting, you know, hundred units here and there. Um, you know, and the problem is when we talk about what's affordable housing, especially in Minneapolis, you know, a lot of times we look at 60% of, um, was it AR, uh, not ARV, sorry, that's, I've had that in my head, area median income. Um, but really those, pr- what we need to in order to like provide housing for some of these people that are really really in a lot of you know 
lot of trouble with housing. They can't find any because of their, you know, whether it's their previous rental history or whether it's just there's not enough literally supply for $800 apartments is we need to get that area median income down to like 30%, even lower for a lot of these people. Um, you know, and so, I mean, this goes back to, I think, the city and, you know, they need to figure out how they can incentivize actually true affordable housing in Minneapolis and, and St. Paul. So it's not just the Minneapolis problem. It's it's a problem in every major metro area throughout the city, throughout the country. Yep. Um, one suggestion would be cut your regulations because I've got investors right? that won't go in the city because they, they say it's just too nope. much hassle. Yeah, there's a lot, and a lot of new developers have pulled out of uh, the cities as well because of the added restrictions uh, that they've placed on there. Yep, very true. Hey, can I make a quick plug? Yeah, go ahead, David. I got got two pieces of land. One is a 40 acre spot over in Baldwin, Wisconsin, actually just north of there in Emerald. Um, Nice piece of hunting land, or if you wanted to build a home, got a nice high spot on it. So that's one, and then I've got a new lot in uh, Inspiration Development over in Bayport, which is a great development. And this one uh, butts right up to the rain garden in the middle of the development, so it's pretty cool. Nice. Give me a call, 612-849-0687 is my number. Perfect. Appreciate the call, Thanks, David. David. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Yes, you too, too sir. Phone lines are open, 651-646-8255. Any uh, questions dealing with mortgages or real estate are welcome. Uh, two best questions of the morning are going to win those St. Paul Saints tickets. Again, 651-646-8255. Uh, and the text number is 612-202-8321. Okay, so um, I might just buzz through one of this list here. So how to buy in a tight market. So we have just a few minutes left of the show here. We might just run through these here quick. This is one of the lists that we were talking about earlier this morning um, that we might run through here. So number one, how to buy in a tight market. Number one, get pre-qualified for mortgage. You are able to make a firm commitment to buy a house uh, and make an offer on that house, and the seller can see that if you are pre-approved for a home loan. John, how many offers are you making uh, right now without a a pre-approval? Zero, sir. Okay. (laughs) Unless you're a cash buyer. Unless you're a cash buyer, yeah. If you're a cash buyer, then you will hold the golden ticket right now, mm-hmm. right? So if, you ha- if you're if you a seller out there and you're selling your house, you get five offers, you got a cash offer, and then you maybe have a couple conventional offers, mm-hmm. you have a couple FHA offers, and maybe a VA offer. Uh, the seller's going to look at which one first? Cash. And they why will. is that? There's le- the, uh, less risk, you know, and not that there's not... You know, there's so many good options, you know, especially when we're getting into multiple offers. Um, But ultimately, you know, the people that are bringing cash to the table, they're going to be able to probably to close almost immediately. And that especially if we're talking about a move up buyer that has to sell their home to buy a new one. um, Man, you know, that that contingency piece for so many uh, sellers right now is such a red flag. They're like, well, I don't know. There's just. You know, there's too much uncertainty, COVID, their job, employment, you know, there's so many ways where you can kind of choose your own adventure and make that, you know, a, a really bad decision. But, you know, that cash offer is always, cash is king. Yep. And that's why we say that. Yep, absolutely. Number two, stay in close contact with your real estate agent. So your agent will be on the lookout for the newest listings that meet your criteria. Be ready to see the house as soon as it goes on the market. If it's a great home, it will go fast. It will. And there's so many easy ways where we can, frankly, automate this, where we're not, you know, I'm not combing through my phone every day looking for all my clients. We've got apps that do that. We can set up searches for you that pop that every day you've got a new new email, you've got a new text like, hey, look at this house, look at this house before even I know about it. So we're giving you all the real time data that makes your search as easy as possible. And that kind of goes into number three here. It says scout out new listings yourself. So yeah. maybe you're browsing apps. Maybe you're browsing Absolutely. some online resources. Maybe you're driving around and you're seeing a sign. For sale by owner. Right? So you yeah. have all those. Maybe that's a non, non, you know, public market type of deal for like the sale for, for sale by owner stuff. Yeah. Um, feel free to scout those listings out yourself. Re- reach out to your real estate agent. They can obviously look into that more for you. Can I throw a new you, one out there? Yeah. What about working with an agent that has ties with wholesalers? And that, you know, again, have off market property. If you're not familiar with wholesaling, what that is is basically if you're, you, everybody knows what a, what flipping a home is. Wholesalers are where a lot of those flippers get their inventory from. Most of the time, they're not buying them off the MLS, they're getting them through the, some back, you know, some off market 
branding or some off off market channels. So when you see the signs like we buy homes for cash, things like that, that's where the home flippers are getting a lot of their inventory. And myself, I've got a lot of connections with wholesalers that we can provide inventory to people at in at entry level price points. And yes, they might need some work, but you know what? You don't have 700 offers on the same deal, which is kind of nice. Right. So yeah, just another channel there, another avenue, another reason why you'd be plugged in with one of the top agents in the state too. Boom. Uh, number four, be ready to make a decision. So true in today's world right now. Mm-hmm. So spend plenty of time in advance deciding what you can afford and must have in a home so you won't hesitate when you have the chance to make an offer. Yep. Make a list of your have-to-haves and your nice-to-haves and your can-live-withouts or something else that you can add later on. Yeah, and then be ready to make a decision. Yep. Unfortunately, for the first-time home buyers, you know, entry-level buyers out there, you kind of got to make a decision within probably 24 hours of mm-hmm. you seeing a house if yeah. you want to buy it or not. Yeah. Um, Obviously not the way that people want it, but that's the way it is right now. So you have to be ready. Number five, bid competitively. Your first inclination may be to start offering something less Mm -hmm. than the absolute highest price you can afford. But if you go too low in a tight market, you will lose out. You will. I know I was talking with actually a new client yesterday and they went through some sort of first time homebuyer training, you know, and they're saying, well, you know, it's a tight market. So, you know, a lot of times people are get, you know, you might be able to make an offer at like 90% of their asking price. I hate to say it, it's not good advice. It, it really isn't. You know, if you're wanting to, it's a, it's a hyper aggressive market. And again, if you, if we go back to that toilet paper analogy, if you see something, you got to run it. You got to run for it. You know, and that means giving your absolute best offer. And there's ways you can do that rather than just saying like, "Well, I'm going to overpay for it." You right. know, because that's the fear I think that most buyers have. Yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, being flexible on your close date is yeah, really 100%. big for sellers right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. You might not be the highest priced offer that went in the table, but because your closing date was flexible and you could be flexible with that and let them kind of decide when you are going to close, that can get you the deal. Huge, huge, huge. right now. Uh, we are number five. We're going to save number six and seven for next week. We appreciate everyone listening to us here on Minnesota Home Talk. We are here during the week. The best way to get a hold of us at any time during the week is minnesotahometalk.com. You can reach out to us uh, with our Ask a Question button. You can reach out to us with our property search. Or you can uh, give us a call as well. We have a real estate hotline. That real estate hotline number is 612 612- Two three four seven five eight five. Thanks for listening again to our show this morning. Have a great week. Thanks, guys.